Immersion mining. It's a way to liquid cool your Bitcoin mining rigs and other crypto ASIC hardware. And a year or two ago, this was a phenomenal solution for smaller to medium and even with the right setups, large scale deployments in the mining game. An incredible way to earn passive income. Hey, I'm Bosk. You're on the Bosk One YouTube channel. I do this all day, every day, and I wanted to create a video that is a bit of an update on what the future of immersion mining looks like, a bit of a recap and a review of how my immersion mining hardware and infrastructure has been working over the last couple of years. If I'm going to expand any further into this, and uh, spoiler, actually why I won't, uh, and the very specific reasons why immersion mining was previously a very interesting and potentially lucrative play, uh, whereas now it's much more risky, it's more expensive, and it has a lower upside. And some immersion mining kits are actually nuking hardware. All right, so let's speed run my immersion mining farm, right? Because I basically have my own little mining farm out here, uh, literally on a farm. And uh, we have air cooled, we have a bunch of other stuff. And then we have the gray shed, which evolved into simply the immersion mining shed. A lot of the mining hardware in there is previous generation and previous generation next year will be two generations ago. And the newer Bitcoin miners that are coming out are going to be literally three times as efficient as the worst hardware from the S19 Bitcoin mining generation. Thanks to Bitcoin bouncing off the charts again, all of the, the entire S19 generation of Bitcoin ASIC mining rigs earn more than they burn in electricity right now at least for me, at my electricity rate, which is simply seven and a half cents per kilowatt hour. So at stock settings, there's no reason why I should turn a single mining rig off. Originally, I had underclocked a lot of S19J Pros, uh, specifically the 104s, and I was getting a better watt per terahash performance there. However, now that uh, it's heated up here in my local area, uh, they're running hotter, they're consuming more power, and they're not particularly impressive on their watts per terahash. Whereas let me show you a air-cooled miner that's just simply auto-tuned, 24 hour hash rate, 286 terahash a second. For what it's worth, this is my best performer. Uh, this is not an outlier, this is pretty consistent performance. So I'm going uh, six, 89 and uh, that's the IP address to log in here remotely you can see the performance in any way you look at it this costs half as much electricity to run per terahash a second this is air cooled not liquid cooled and it's essentially hitting at like four times the hash rate and S21 XP here in particular hey you want to buy a mining rig do you want a pretty good price on it and pretty fast shipping then you may be looking for ASIC marketplace Click our link in the video description below to not only support our channel, but support yourself with the coupon code we've got right next to it. The point being, I'm spending a lot of electricity to not earn all that much Bitcoin with this older hardware. Uh, and this newer generation of Bitcoin miners like the S21s, they are killing themselves in different immersion uh, infrastructure deployments. Uh, for example, they will nuke themselves in the fog caching C6. The S19 XPs, you know, heavy emphasis on the 19, not the 21 there. Uh, in the fog hashing B6D, uh, I had a couple miners kill themselves in there. I also had S19J104s uh, that uh, fried their hash boards in there. Uh, just to simply an inadequate cooling design, uh, which I think is a big reason why they moved to the C6. I never had any of those issues with the S19 generation Bitcoin miners and the newer fog hashing equipment, but the newer fog hashing equipment uh, was not the right solution for uh, converting the air-cooled to liquid-cooled uh, S21 series of Bitcoin miners. That's also been a miner series that's been plagued with problems in air-cooled as well as liquid-cooled. 
uh, they've made an immersion specific version, but that's only for three phase electricity. Uh, for example, I only have single phase electricity out here on the farm. I take both hot legs of uh, 120, right? And then I have 240 single phase voltage. Uh, watch our electricity guide if that doesn't make any sense to you. And I try to break down everything the best I can there. Uh, but looking at the different immersion mining setups, right? I have Vixbit deployed on the farm. I have DCX deployed on the farm. I have fog hashing deployed on the farm. And these are the big three immersion mining options other than just buying like an immersion container uh, from Bitmain. They've started producing those. Uh, so anything on the smaller scale side is gonna come from uh, these companies. And the fog hashing units in particular um, are the easiest to deal with and the most approachable. Uh, so we have a link and coupon code if you wanna grab one of those. Immersion mining in a neighborhood style setup is an absolute peak solution. Uh, so you don't wanna make a bunch of noise, you don't wanna make a bunch of heat, whatever, right? Drop that dry cooler on the side of your house, punch two holes through the wall, whether that goes to your basement or garage or whatever, and then slap a freaking Mitsubishi or Daikin or uh, you know, Mr. Cool <laughs> logo on it. And they'll think you're just running a mini split and that's what it sounds like, that's what it looks like. No harm, no foul. If you do that in this era, there's only one single miner that I would buy, unless you're getting old gear like the S19 series uh, that has proven well uh, and durable in immersion mining uh, deployments. I would be picking up the Canon a1566 i or immersion ready miners these things are literally built for immersion they run on single phase electricity and you can just grab them and drop them in they look good they work well the only thing to watch out for is they are absolute energy hogs they will use a lot of electricity and absolutely suck up all of a 20 amp circuit uh, so depending on your uh you know outlet deployment there your pdus whatever you're using uh, it's just something to understand and keep in mind. Watch those specific videos to get a better idea uh, on those. Uh, so that's what I would do on that front. You may have noticed in a lot of my immersion mining systems, there's Bitcoin miners, there's some Dogecoin miners, there's a couple other crypto miners, but there's also a lot of Nervos Network CKB miners. Nervos Network is a cryptocurrency that's committed to proof of work. They're never gonna move away from proof of work. They've launched additional layer two chains in conjunction with their layer one proof of work blockchain. So they are absolutely strengthened and hardened by the best blockchain consensus mechanism in the world ever, proof of work or mining. Basically, they're not gonna move away from mining. I don't know how else to say it. And that's so freaking cool. And that makes me happy, confident, and proud to have those miners deployed here on the Voscoy Mining Farm. In an era full of uncertainty, where a lot of cryptocurrencies have ditched proof of work, Nervos Network CKB remains steadfast, supporting miners through simple authenticity and transparency that, that they're committed. Thanks to them for supporting Voscoin. And thanks to all that, it's why I mine CKB and I hold those CK bytes. I have zero plans to convert any random air-cooled miners to liquid-cooled. It also generated many headaches for me over time from running miners that were running great for years and air cooled. I ran out of space, but I had space in the immersion shed. Uh, so I converted them from air cooled to liquid cooled and then ended up destroying them. Case in point, the S19 XPs and a couple other S19s uh, in the fall caching in the B6D that had inadequate cooling in the summer months here. Uh, so, I mean, that's really frustrating. And with uh, Bitcoin's you know recent price movement, an old S19 XP 141, right? I've had this for a long time. Uh, it would be earning $4 a day in profit after I account for my electricity bill. That's a huge return from a device that is over three years old from its announcement. Since Bitcoin has been popping off, it's creating a lot of staying power and something you'll find with immersion mining is you feel rather committed to it. Uh, as a rule of thumb, by the way, if you want to get into immersion mining, a smaller scale side of things, you essentially pay about $1,000 per mining rig, right? You want to deploy six miners, you're going to pay around $6,000 investing in that immersion setup. So you've got to clear your money back on the mining rigs, of course, as well as that immersion 
hardware, that immersion infrastructure, I should maybe say. Uh, whereas if you have a shed in the backyard, you can cut a couple holes in it, buy a couple fans and vents for like 400 bucks off Amazon, and then just drop your miner in there. Recouping $400 of profits through mining as opposed to $6,000 are much different journeys. But let me also assure you that immersion mining is cool as shit and it will blow people's mind. It is the most fun thing to show people in person. They cannot believe that there's hardware under there that is consuming more electricity than their oven. And it's just all you're hearing is little little little, little liquid action zipping around that tub through the pump. Out of Big Spit, DCX, and fog hashing, if I was going to add another immersion setup, uh, I would do a fog hashing C6. That's why I bought a fog hashing C6 over the last year. And I really wanted to do that to max out my uh, setup there in the immersion mining shed to have a little bit of overflow and backup for a system there. Uh, because if you don't know, uh, some of these systems I did get into review over the years here on the Bond Screen YouTube channel. It, it doesn't bias me or impact me. Um, it's just a, a really great opportunity for us as content creators here uh, to try different systems and uh, create cool content and get our costs down because we spent a lot of extra time and a lot of extra money outfitting all of these different systems. It would make more, more sense to just pick one thing and say deploy six of those in this scenario instead of having six different systems. I mean, I have the Bixbit two to three minor unit cell, I have the Bixbit six minor cell, I have a fall caching C2, I have a fall caching B6D, I have a fall caching C6. Later on, I added an additional fall caching C6. I have the DCX two minor unit, I have the DCX eight minor unit, and I have the revised DCX uh, two minor unit, uh, but they only sent me the parts to that to hook that up with a pool. I don't, I do not have a pool yet, and I thought that it would have more components with it. That one's, uh, you know, just all pretty and blue sitting in the corner. But anyway, ironically, the B6D broke and I ended up putting most of the equipment that was in the B6D, it just moved it right over into the C6. Uh, so I actually don't really have any overflow. I have since gotten the uh, repair parts to fix the B6D. Uh, so I could get that fixed and, and going if I really wanted and needed to there. Uh, but there's not enough fluid in there uh, with only one or two miners uh, due to the, especially due to the overflow design on that. Uh, th so then I need to add a lot more fluid, uh, which can be expensive or put in something in there to displace uh, that fluid, like old miners that uh, just, you know, cost way more to run and, and aren't worth plugging in. Uh, for example, like all my Casp mining rig door stoppers. I sure do have a lot of those. Thanks, Cas. Looking forward with immersion mining, I see it as a very niche solution. Uh, I've explored deploying uh, large scale immersion setups here. For example, like the plug and play immersion uh, mining containers that say fog hashing makes. Uh, but the cost is, is awful. It's ridiculous. You pay a massive premium to do immersion mining over air cooled, uh, just trashing the mining investment. And it, it just doesn't make any sense. The only reason I would see why you would ever want to pay that premium is if you're building a mining farm in an area that has a noise ordinance or you really need to fly under the radar uh, and you can't make noise. Uh, Air-cooled mining at scale absolutely makes a lot of noise uh, and uh, liquid cooling does not. I mean, the dry coolers, they just are not that loud. Even the big ones are just not, not very loud. Uh, so there's that aspect and then running a setup, uh, you know, in a garage, uh, in uh, an HOA area where you don't want to draw any attention or make any noise. Uh, I think immersion mining systems are the perfect way to build a mining farm in your garage and just put two little holes on the wall uh, and then you're not running outside air through your garage getting things dirty and it's a very simple sealed clean design. If I could go back in time, um, I would have had a couple immersion mining tanks in my garage uh, at my old house instead of just superheating. Uh, that garage up with not much of an airflow solution and, and I actually just bled with a mini split cooling that thing uh, for quite a long time. Ultimately air cooled is a way better bang for buck 
And that's where I've been spending my time and money uh, to expand that on the mining farm. Uh, we ran a bunch of electricity, uh, scrounging it up from the other services into the digital shovel uh, mini pod M300. We deployed two digital shovel nanopods that we basically brought back with us uh, from going up there and touring that factory. That was really fun, really cool experience. And if I didn't have those and I didn't and I didn't want to buy those, I would be doing another mining shed like we've done numerous times over the years here on the channel. So that's my real time analysis and breakdown of this stuff. Uh, t take from it what you will. Uh, it's a niche thing within a niche. I'm Vosk here on the Vosk on YouTube channel. This is our CMO, our chief of mining officer. We're in 10 seconds of tales in every video. She kickstarted this journey. I appreciate you. Good luck and goodbye.